Okay, so now we're gonna do trigeminal nerve, trigeminal ganglion, which is cranial nerve five. And as you can see, it's a huge picture and it sucks. But this picture has almost everything that Dr. Leo goes through in lecture. Uh, and if you can draw this whole thing out, maybe just the beginning, a simple skeleton, and then keep adding to it every time you get new bits of information in each lecture, it's a lot easier. Um, going through the slides, Dr. Leo kind of repeats the same thing over and over again. So I can't stress enough how having everything in one picture is really helpful. Um, so we're gonna have V1, V2, V3, obviously for trigeminal, and we'll go through those in a sec. And here we go. And then I'll show the whole thing again at the end. So very beginning, a few concepts, and these are random concepts, but they're high yield, so they're good to keep in mind. Um, so foramen spinosum, we're gonna talk about a lot of foramens here, but foramen spinosum, there's an artery that pops out of there. You guys know what it is? Middle meningeal. Right, middle meningeal. That is high yield. Can you see with pencil or should I do pen? Okay. I'll switch to pen. So I have blue too if you want. Middle meningeal artery. That's high yield. Um, and then superior orbital fissure. You have a lot of things going through the superior orbital fissure. So you have cranial nerve three, you have cranial nerve four, and if you know all your cranial nerves, that should make sense for both of those. Um, and then off of trigeminal, you have just V1. So keep that in mind, just V1. And also six. Oops. So three, four, V1, and six. Um, and one thing that Dr. Leo, I think, has said a ton of times, standing room only. Okay. So that should give some context. So standing, V1, superior orbital fissure. That's what we're talking about right here. So superior orbital fissure for V1, there's your V1, and then we're gonna do room and only for V2, V3. So these are just random things, again, that might be high yield later, you may not have studied them yet, but nerves tagged on the brain. This is going to happen during the practical. Three and six, just keep them in mind now. Um, three, cranial nerve three is tagged between Ica, so it's anterior, inferior, cerebral artery, right? And some labyrinth arteries. But just remember, Ica is the most important thing. And then, or sorry, that was six. Six is between Ica and the labyrinth. And then three is tagged between the posterior cerebral artery and the superior cerebellar. Sorry that's that a nutcracker position. Right, that's a nutcracker position. So three and six. I know it's random, but it's really, really high, so it's good to know. And then, so a couple of motor to the eye. Have you guys done these before? SO4, yeah. LR6? Okay, those are kind of random, but SO4, superior orbital is four, lateral rectus is six, everything else is three. Okay, I think that's it for the high yield. These are the random things that Ricky Kalia told us years ago. Time to do V1. All right, so try to do this. Try a gem ganglia. This is cranial nerve five. And one thing to keep in mind, there's no parasympathetics for cranial nerve five. Because why? Because the cranial nerves were, or the parasympathetic fibers were from which cranial nerves? Three, seven, nine, and 10. Three, seven, nine, and 10. So this is five, so there are no parasympathetics. So for context, brainstem, sending out fibers. So your cell bodies of origin are in this ganglia. That's the whole point of the ganglia. And now we're sending out fibers. Sending out three fibers, V1, V2, V3. And right now we'll do V1. So for all three of these, as soon as they come out, the first thing you need to think when you eventually memorize this is they're coming out and what hole are they going out through? So V1 is going through superior orbital fissure, which we just talked about a second ago. And V1, these are all sensory fibers. So if you keep that in mind, you don't have to worry about them when you get there. So it goes, and three main things to remember. None of this is necessarily anatomically accurate, but it's just a good way to remember it. Early on, so NFL is what I remembered, so in whatever order. So that's your frontal, your lacrimal nerve, and your nasal ciliary. Okay. And now if you just start with that, you can keep adding more details as you learn them in class. So for frontal, you'll learn, learn goes on and does supraorbital. 
and it also does supra trochlear supra orbital and let's see superior orbital fissure so all that should make sense context of where you are and lacrimal nerve so talk about lacrimal nerve for a sec we mentioned earlier that what was hopping on to v1 the uh lingual no you're so close lacrimal something was hopping on what was trying to get there so we said right here back when we were talking about cranial nerve seven so cranial nerve seven we we're talking about greater petrosal nerve we mentioned that we need to get to the lacrimal gland, right? So parasympathetics need to get to the lacrimal gland. How are they going to get to the lacrimal gland? They're going to hop on V1. So they're going to hop on V1. Why? Because, so the good example is if you get something in your eye, right? You need to sense it. Well, that's trigeminal nerve. You're sensing it. So we'll go back to this picture. So you need to sense it, and you're going to do that with trigeminal. So you sense it with trigeminal, and then you, you need to tear up, and you tear up with parasympathetics. So the parasympathetics need to get there, so greater petrosal nerve can come, and it'll hop on to get make its way all the way up here. Lacrimal nerve, does that make sense? They both work together. Okay, so we have that, and last one, nasociliary. I mean, these are kind of details, but you can add them as you learn them in lecture. Um, coming off the nasociliary, you have a couple of ethmoidals, or ethmoid. And you'll even learn that you have like an anterior and a posterior. So you can just add those on and it's cool because as you add these little details and you kind of figure it out with your own drawing, then when you open netters, it all makes sense coming off of here. And then if you want to keep adding details, um, you know, you've got long ciliary nerves. Okay, and long ciliary nerves versus short ciliary nerves. The long ones, this is going on to do what? It's going on to do eye sympathetics. And that's it for V1.